So the snapshot for today is to review consumer trends over the last year, obviously with um, having lived through a pandemic. What is the new normal? What's the psychology of fashion and how does that influence how we feel about ourselves? And then from there, we're going to look at a little snapshot of what a capsule wardrobe could look like for that working from home um, Zoom call that we're all experiencing. Um, fashion therapy and what that actually means. Trends for Autumn 21 how to upcycle your wardrobe in a really simple um, way and obviously with that boosting morale. So hopefully without further ado, we're just gonna crack on with all of that. It's quite a lot to get through. So um, I might go at high speed and um, I might skip a few things, but if there's anything you want me to go back over at the end, um, hopefully we'll have the opportunity for a few questions. Happy to answer any questions from you all. Um, feel free to um, you know, let me know if, that, if you have anything in mind that you need to specifically chat about. So the fashion industry has really leapt forward in terms of taking everything by storm on the digital front. And this is just one of the images of how some of the trends and catwalks have been viewed um, over the last year. So let's review consumer trends. So COVID has totally reshaped our world along with it, our lifestyle and the way that we um, actually um, interact, our consumer habits as it were. Zoom has become a household name, as you're probably all aware. Um, Amazon has been the highlight of our weeks. The deliveries have um, really sort of like made a difference. So those selfie treats took the form of um, lingerie and nightwear sales, though they massively increased. And um, also we had um, a little snapshot of a viral um, dress from Hill House that went viral on Instagram um, that was um, deemed the nap dress, which was another opportunity for a bit of a fashion statement, but doing it from home. So what did working from home look like? Well, we'll look at that in a bit more depth. Then we saw the crash of the high street. Well, to be honest, if I spoke to some of my colleagues, some of us had been seeing that about to happen over the last few years. So it wasn't actually news, but it was exacerbated by the pandemic. So we saw polar opposites being predicted in 2019, with the likes of Boohoo being the mass market versus somebody like Gucci or Fendi, the big super brands that we know. So there was complete polar opposites. So what did that actually mean for the fashion market? Well, we saw what it meant. We caved on the middle market. People like Super, um, sorry, Sports Direct took over House of Fraser. Who would have thought that would happen? And then following that, we had Arcadia Dutt take a nosedive. Debenhams in the middle, in the mix. So really, you know, who would have thought that would happen? But actually, I suppose you could say it was going to happen, but it just 10 years happened in one year, if you like. Health and well-being took a massive lift. Gymshark being one of the um, big shout outs in that department. And other things going on in the background are important to mention really is that George Floyd, um, Black Lives Matter, especially this week with um, the final, um, you know, decision over the ruling for that. Um, thank goodness um, they have actually had that just, you know, ruling happen. We had President Trump in the background, inauguration of Joe Biden, thank goodness. And finally, Amanda Gormley took the limelight with her amazing poem. Um, black, you know, obviously on the back of the Black Lives Matter, the fashion industry really started to look at how they were operating, making sure that everything they were doing was in a more fair and, um, you know, fair and just manner. And I think everybody has actually taken a step back and done that. Um, many big corporations that I know of, including Bain in the, in the US, have actually looked at how they handle um, people of colour within industry. So I think that's really important. Um, on the back of that, we've got LGBTQ plus the inclusivity um, aspect of that. Um, you know, obviously how you fill in your form, even down to when you're doing your um, sensor, you know, the sensor for the census that we've all had to do lately. Um, you even have to say where what your um, preference is in terms of heterosexual, you know, where you fall in that bracket. And I think that's really important that finally all of those people have got a voice. And, and then on the back of that, we've got this lifestyle, this massive lift in the lifestyle brand. So Rafa being the main shout out there, I think, um, with the cycling. So all the gear and no idea. So lots of people cycling we see on the streets, but maybe perhaps not as proficient at it, but wearing all the Lycra, have all the gear. Um, and the rise of the small and agile brands on the back of this massive influx of AI. So a couple of people to mention, never fully dressed and love shack fancy on the women's wear front have really come to the forefront on Instagram, have been able to react to sales and, and have been much more agile than some of the bigger brands that we know about. So that's just the main 
sort of look back over the last 12 months, really, from my point of view. So this is the nap dress. I just thought you might like to see what it actually looked like. So this is the one that went viral on Instagram and, and you know, actually day, a day wear dress, but they've they deemed it the nap dress and suddenly it took off. Um, so the sweat pant. Now, I don't, I can't, you can't tell me that you haven't actually queued up at Sainsbury's in your slippers and your sweatpants to buy that chocolate and that bottle of red wine. I know I did. And um, thank goodness nobody got to take any photos of me doing it. So is it here to stay? Um, I don't know is the answer. To be honest, I'm not ready to get rid of mine yet. So I'm not sure if anyone else is, but I probably certainly won't be advertising the fact. I won't be, I definitely won't be looking as um, glamorous as JLo in mine, but um, this is just a few of the celebrities that have been seen about town wearing their, um, wearing their joggers and their sweatpants, and they obviously carry it off with a plum, but um, I don't think the sweatpant is gonna go anywhere, but it certainly won't be a massive fashion feature going forward. Rest in peace. <laughs> so a post COVID kind of world, what's it gonna shape up with, to? So the new normal, Consumers are less afraid of technology on the back of all of this AI that we've had to look up, look, you know, the way we've been working. And so we're buying strongly into that narrative online and the authentic voice is key. But we're also on the on the flip side to that is we want to connect with each other. So as Lee said, we're going back to face to face. We're embracing that um, return to seeing people, embracing the return to nature. But on the other side, we've still got that connectivity to technology. So it's not really going to go away. Is AI disrupting or enhancing our lifestyle? I'd say it's probably a little bit of both and it's just getting the balance. Health and well-being isn't going to go anywhere and I think that's still going to increase. Um, people have now got used to the fact that they can um, snack on their healthy lifestyle, fit it in around work. I think that's much more about how we're going to go forward. Inclusivity and, and the BLM those issues are not going to go away in fact they're paving the way for reform within industry and i think that's really really good to see so that's a positive side to that element coming through the kindness economy if you look at mary porter she's done some talks with um ted talks on people first then planet and then profit and, I, and do you know what it's welcome news to see that and on the back of that, we've seen people like Depop um, suddenly become incredibly popular. Some of the bigger brands are trying to use that platform as a way of targeting new customers. So Depop in the terms of swapping your clothing, um, regenerating the interest in vintage clothing, I think that's um, you know really positive change to how we're approaching fashion. So it is all about regeneration. It's not necessarily sustainability anymore. I think it's about finding ways of helping the planet. Um, recycling is one way, circularity, i.e. no waste, um, in terms of business model, that's another way of helping the planet. But regeneration, in other words, from the ground up, farming actual cotton that actually helps the soil regenerate naturally is the way forward. And there is a few brands that are starting to really um, pioneer that area. Um, other areas of growth, gaming industry has started to influence fashion with 3D um, 3D animation to show garments before you actually sample any product is another way of, um, you know, approaching fashion in a more sustainable manner. So it, we're all going in the right direction. We just need to make it happen more quickly. And I think the digital, um, although it may have caused disruption, I think that's actually going to help us going forward. So these are just a few shots. And um, this lady, I don't know if you can see her, but she's actually got her pajamas on underneath. The table so obviously um it really made me roar with laughter when i read an article in the new york times about a gentleman that had been caught wearing his boxer shorts and he stood up in the middle of a presentation on zoom only to realize that he dressed from the waist up and um, he hadn't i don't know if everyone else has heard about that but that really made me laugh so i, I thought this photo was you know quite a good one just to capture that kind of thing of people you know wanting to be able to chill out in your pajamas don't worry with your capsule wardrobe i'm definitely not going to recommend that you go out in your um pajamas i don't think that would be a good look but we can find a way around that and um, the right rise of ai obviously we've talked about that um massive um disruption but actually innovation coming through from that so this is actually a picture from um, wgsn just to highlight that fact that we are seeing innovation through ai um, e-commerce is not going to go away it's in fact it's building it's building on the momentum that it had last year and i think it's just finding the voice and making sure that it's um authentic when it comes across to the customer and those of us that are going out to shop we are going local now we are not going to go far afield we want we want to shop and support our local community and actually those that buy into the more contemporary brands 
um, are looking to buy um, in those um, sort of mid-market level local shops, which is quite interesting to see. Health and well-being. I talked about the snacking of people wanting to dip in and out of this healthy lifestyle. That's not going to go away. We're still going to see that. But obviously, um, it's just going to fit around our working week. Sustainability. And I think this should actually be, we should be looking at regeneration rather than sustainability. Everyone's been going about sustainability, but actually, we don't want to sustain anymore. We need to start helping um, regenerate. So we need to find a way of making fashion do that. Um, Stella McCartney's just recently launched in the last two weeks her new leather which has been made out of mushrooms and we'll come on to that later but that is just one way of regenerating um, product and fashion that's better for the planet. So let's go on to psychology of fashion. Let's have a look at what it all means. Um, I like to look at um, history actually. Um, I like to go back in time and see if there's been any incident in history where we've found ourselves in um, you know, a fashion flux, let's say. So let's have a little look at what's been going on. So if we look back at history, you know, following on from the First World War, if I go back that far, like literally pretty much 100 years or more, um, we had a Spanish flu epidemic. Obviously, none of us were probably around or alive to hit to be there for that. But this is that was a similar scenario where people were, you know, obviously very ill, lots of things going on. We had the World War as well just ended and then after that the reaction to that was literally a decade of nothing but parties bring it on is what I say I can't wait for that to happen so but obviously theirs was the jazz age and the balloons reset so it was a decade of where social rules did not apply and you just wanted to go out and have fun and I think really that's what we're ready for we're sick of the pandemic we just want to have some fun um everybody talks about the fashion barometer you know the high low of the hemline um, is it real? Well, you know, after the Wall Street crash in 1929, the hemlines dropped overnight, indicating poor economic times. So in theory, this theory that's been created by George, our friend George, um, he basically argued about the fact that the hemline drops when it's um, poor economic times and then it creeps up when it's a good economic time. Does it still stand today? Actually, I think it does. So it'd be interesting to see how the catwalks um, influence us in the way that we're dressing going forward and then um, I've been looking into how you wear what you feel and well, I do think it's actually there is some um, element of truth in that obviously there's been some articles written there's a book by um, you are what you wear by John T Moley um, which might be worth a look um, science.com um, is also another um, site that talks about enclosed cognition where you wear um, clothes that actually describe your identity or how you feel about yourself and it, actually in nature you see birds you know it's the peacock flamboyance element or you see people wanting to be part of the pack so a tribal acceptance um, element coming through so all of those things do actually influence what we do and how we dress. And Lee wanted me to talk about dress for success. And I know some of you are actually interested in that, in how your appearance impacts how people treat you or how you feel. And it isn't just an accident, actually. I think there is some psychology behind it. And obviously there's lots of people that have written articles. So it's all about conforming with the norm, acceptance, and, and then also identity and creativity. Um, so I think there is an element of all of those things that apply to how we're wearing. And we'll look at that in a little bit more detail shortly. So I had a look at the catwalks for you just to see what was coming through. And obviously in, these, in this instance is mainly women's wear, but just to give you a flavor of what I've seen so far. So we've got um, D Square um, looking at um, Tom Ford um, in the first image there where the hemline has gone super short. So that is, for me, that's kind of an indicator of a fun times to be had. I think we're all ready for a, a bit of a party um, once we've got over the pandemic, um, here's hoping. And Long Van actually have styled their um, ladies wear collection with a real 20s feel. So that made me think about the history. That was why I started talking to you about the history in the previous slide. So it really has got that sort of 20s element to it. I don't know if, you, if that comes across in that image that I put there on the PowerPoint. And then the power dressing, although we don't really see ourselves wearing suits so much, there is a kind of dressed up kind of element with the shoulder pads. It does have a reminiscent sort of 80s feel with those big shoulder pads in the gray there. So just to kind of give you that feeling of that um, dressing for success. Um, and then second skin, the comfort element, people wanting to be comforted, um, obviously a little bit more protected and um, looked after. That second skin element with the all-in-one, the cat suit is really coming through with David Cormer there on the final slide. So 
all those things are shaping up how we're going to look at fashion going forward. So fashion therapy, fashion therapy, just for those that uh, haven't looked into it in more detail, is all about the individual relationship between behaviour and personal identity, how we communicate our mood and our attitude and how that relays how we're feeling about ourselves. So it really does come down to the choice of your clothes and accessories and the colours that you um, decide to wear on the day. Some people think it's um, accidental, but in fact, it isn't. I think we all, um, we'd like to think it's accidental, but it does actually have um, a compelling argument for how you know, our self-esteem is viewed, um, how our confidence is on the day. All of those things are all contributing to the colors that we choose. Um, so it's got a part, it's a part of our personal communication, in fact. Um, I know there's been articles written about the buzz of adrenaline when you go out and do a bit of retail therapy. And I think that is, that, apparent with the selfie treat that we saw coming through with the lingerie being purchased in 2020 last year there is a bit of element of that where you actually feel better about yourself when you've treated yourself to something lovely and then obviously there's other conversations about wearing sunny colors to brighten your mood and make you feel a bit better about yourselves and that and that does um, actually happen um, but I do remember um, that feeling of comfort wearing you know either a boyfriend's oversized jumper or your dad's sweater or whatever just to make you feel a bit more cozy and looked after that protection of wearing something that's oversized is still um is still coming through in some of the clothes that we wear as maybe that's why we all chose to wear the sweatpant back in 2020 who knows but that comfort element is still key so one of those things you could do to actually um give a bit of fashion therapy in the workplace. You could have a dress up day, for example. You could choose a color and all of your team could wear that color to make you feel a bit better and have a bit of a fun time. Or you could wear something with a bit of a sparkle. I'm not saying that everybody that would be everybody's choice, but actually it could be quite good fun. So those are a couple of thoughts um, about how you could actually use fashion therapy to have a bit more fun at work when you actually see people face to face. So color is key. And I thought this slide was really lovely because it's obviously lots of different people wearing colours. Um, just head to toe, which is obviously um, an, a really nice way to view it. But just going into colour in more depth, I have written some key points actually on the back of doing some research myself and to how colour influences what, how we feel about ourselves. And um, there's positive and negatives to every colour choice. And obviously it really does depend on your complexion. But in a nutshell, res, red has a physical impact on how we feel, excitement, strength, energy as well as some of the combinations can be a bit more aggressive. Orange is associated with food and warmth and shelter. Obviously you immediately think of carrot. Well, I do, I think of carrots, but um, not everybody would do. But, but that obviously has some kind of element of, um, and, you know, um, of food associated with it. And then yellow, you know, we automatically think of um, sunlight and positive energy but it does have some um, element of anxiety. If you choose the wrong color, if it's discordant with your co complexion, then it could actually compromise your confidence in the end. And then green is associated with balance and healing and calm. And obviously most people would automatically assume that it would be very calming. And quite often, I don't know if you've noticed, but if you do look at hospital gowns or you go to the inside of a hospital, quite often that's a green color that's used there. And that's why it's associated with calm and um, reassurance. Blue, colour of thinking and intellectual activity. So anybody that's wearing a, lo a lot of blue to work, good on you. Um, it generally means that you're um, trustworthy and efficient and reliable. So that's one for the, for the thought, um, for the wardrobe rehash. If you're gonna have a wardrobe overhaul, maybe consider a bit more blue in your wardrobe. And then going on to other co colour combinations, obviously for, um, I won't go through them all in loads of detail, but if you want to have a look at colour in depth and how that impacts how you feel about yourself, then it's all here on the slides. I'm quite happy for you to have a look. But equally, um, The Beginner's Guide to Colour Psychology by Angela Wright is a good read. Um, Caroline Muir, um, PhD, has done a talk on the psychology of fashion, if you want to have a further in-depth look at that. And then um, a little bit of um, drama behind colour in terms of where it's come from and the history of colour. The Secret Lives of Colour by Cassia Sinclair is a good, another good read, um, but it has a much more of a kind of um, link to nature and where colour actually is derived from, you know, as in paint and the history behind the actual dye stuff, um, which is quite interesting. So capsule wardrobe, let's keep it simple, shall we? Um, it could get a bit complicated, but this is what generally what um, I see coming through in a, a very kind of 
easy to wear. So we'll start with a female um, kind of wardrobe. So working from home, a statement top that can be worn on Zoom with simple um, black trousers is a really good way to go. Something that's a bit more considered, um, might have a sleeve detail because that's what you'd see on Zoom if you're doing it on Zoom. And it's something that could easily go back within the rest of your wardrobe, wouldn't be such a big thing to find. Um, relaxed wide leg denim is coming through, that's really key. And I suppose that's a move on from the sweatpant. Hooray, might finally see the back of them. Um, so that might be a way forward. And then the running legging, the all purpose running legging. Um, obviously we see ourselves in the ash, le ash, ash leather, sorry, excuse my friend, um, the ath leisure going forward. And I think the running legging is a good, um, you know, kind of bridge the gap, I suppose. And the cashmere jogger, something that's a bit more luxurious and knitted would be gorgeous instead of wearing the um, sweatpant from JD Sports. Um, and the chunky socks is another winner. I think that's um, obviously, if you're gonna sit on a call for any length of time, you need a, um, a decent um, sock underneath it your wardrobe and then the blankie I've called it the blankie but actually the wrap is going to be super key going into autumn into 21 and it's a perfect um perfect sort of item for your wardrobe if you're going to have an outdoor chat if you're going to do a face-to-face -face in the park or if you're having a business conversation with someone I think an investment piece would be um having a decent wrap or throw that you can wear over a, a lovely coat it would be the perfect um go-to for that so hopefully that's given you a little bit of insight onto um, the female wardrobe. And then if you look at menswear, it's actually fairly simple. Um, so um, in terms of menswear, this lovely shot here from Vogue um, shows a layered approach to the wardrobe. So a loose um, pant with um, a cardigan over the top with a roll neck underneath is a lovely way of dressing. Just having those layers that are quite simple, but, you know, just colour blocked. And then also looking at a wide jean um, for menswear as well. I think that's um, there's a lovely shot there from Balenciaga um, as a replacement to um, the jogger. And then we actually see the jogger here. Um, it's another street shot, um, the center um, image there from Vogue, which actually shows the menswear um, amount, you know, with his um, tailored coat over the top of a jogger, which is a lovely way to go if you're gonna have those outdoor meetings. Um, and then we're talking about this wide scarf again, um, then on the right hand side. And then finally the tank layered up with a, uh, with a lovely shirt, a smart shirt for those Zoom calls, which is a nice way of going about your knitwear. So that just gives you some idea of what the menswear um, capsule wardrobe could be. Just a few elements, just pull them out from the back of your wardrobe. You may already have them, or might be just a nice way of like um, investing in some new pieces to go forward. So top tips for dressing for success. Um, obviously I've mentioned keeping it simple, but this is what's coming off the catwalk largely. So you've got the denim hipster um, with the wide leg trouser. We've got Philip Lim with a pleat skirt. So this sort of um, suit dressing is a lot of pleat skirts coming through off the catwalks. I love Chanel's um, outfits here where she's actually um, layered a cardigan with an, what looks like an Ugg boot. I'm not suggesting that everybody goes out in their Ugg boots, but actually, it does look quite nice with a sequin dress. Um, so that might be an option for um, day to evening. Um, and then Shapura Loena um, has actually started, you know, been a very big influence in terms of how she recycles and regenerates fashion. So the statement dress here um, as worn by one of the editors um, is lovely. And I just think that that's a really lovely way of um, taking a dress that's quite a simple shape, but just having it in, um, you know, recycled or regenerated or reworked fabrics is a lovely way to go. And then just putting a pop of colour on with um, either a shoe or a boot um, with your outfit is another way of um, livening up your wardrobe. And then menswear, quite simple, just have a lovely blazer and then easily wear a hoodie underneath, which would just give you that kind of bridge between home and work, wearing that kind of athleisure look uh, um, out um, in a more smart way would be really lovely. So um, macro trends for autumn winter 21 and colour. So the overarching theme coming through here is about warmth, togetherness, function and sustainability. So I'm just going to talk, go quickly through all these trends that are coming through um, that I see as being really key for autumn winter 21. So I thought we'd just talk about Pantone and the colours they've chosen for this year. Um, so Pantone don't normally choose grey. 
and this is actually a quote from Vogue um, itself, where they actually um, talk about how um, grey has never been chosen by Pantone as a colour of the year before, let alone having two colours um, for one year. So we've got yellow, yellow, which is obviously this idea of happiness, sunshine, but the counter side to that, which I mentioned previously, is anxiety and um, how, um, how apt really following the pandemic to have a kind of colour that could be either taken as a sunshine happy colour or could be taken as a form of anxiety if you get the tone wrong so it's just really be really careful about that yellow and then grey really makes me think of AI actually but it's also a, a colour for auster austerity so grey um, teamed with yellow is quite an interesting combination coming from Pantone for, for this year. So overarching trends um, it's all about the fungi. It's all about mushrooms. We've seen so many catwalks coming through with um, this element of um, what I look, what looks like um, influenced by mushrooms and um, biodiversity. Um, and obviously, it's not just about mushrooms. I actually um, saw a documentary about how um, packaging could be reinvented using sea kelp, farmed sea kelp, actually off the coast of Whitby, which I thought was really interesting. So a Yorkshire firm have actually started pioneering plastic bottles, but they're not plastic, they're made out of sea kelp, which means that they're bio um, biodegradable. So it's all about using technology to um, make it better and make it um, much more planet friendly going forward. So Stella McCartney has obviously been pioneering using mushrooms instead of leather. And then we see some of these other catwalks coming through with um, Raoul Mishri um, choosing to use mushrooms as a form of inspiration um, for their prints and for their, um, for their silhouettes. So it's um, definitely here to stay. Um, the collage retro. So this is all about um, recycling, upcycling. And we see John Rocha, Etro, um, Marine Serre, Duro Louis, um, all of these people are actually um, really um, looking at collaging and um, reworking existing textiles into new shapes. So I think that's really exciting and that's going to be a key trend. We, I mentioned second skin and that feeling of being comfortable in your own skin and being um, you know, cherished and looked after. It's almost like lingerie has taken um, a step to being worn to be seen again. So um, Tom Ford has done it in a very sort of um, feminine, sexy way. But then you have Givenchy um, for menswear doing it in a, in a rib, a knitted sort of cashmere rib, which again looks quite different, but it's all about that second skin. It's about feeling safe and being looked after. Elemental, it's that connectivity to outside, to the outdoors. And obviously there's been quite a few people that have um, championed this. We've got um, Kenzo to, um, as one of them, but it's just really that almost technology and outerwear fabrics being used in interesting and new ways. So the cocooning and the kind of um, ovoid silhouettes um, coming through for that sculptured, protected feel to this story. And then moody glitz. So obviously we were talking about parties. I mentioned about the 1920s. I've got the long van image here on this um, board, but obviously Acne Studio, Balenciaga, Givenchy, um, Rock to name but a few. There's um, quite a lot of this moody glitz coming through, this feeling of optimism, but wanting to do, uh, to have a party basically, wanting to get out from um, this pandemic and actually be able to celebrate with all of our friends. So there's that real, that's the opposite side to being cocooned and um, safe. And the It Girl is um, having a resurgence. So Tom Ford is really the main collection I'd probably shout about for this um, in terms of his approach to that sexy kind of look. And um, obviously some of the other um, brands have really started championing it as well. So you can see from the images, it's all about getting out, get, having a party. It's quite reminiscent of the 1990s actually in many ways. So on the flip side to all of those trends, um, let's just talk about how it actually relates to us in terms of upcycling and regeneration and sustainability. So how can we actually affect any of it in our own wardrobes and how can we actually do anything about it? Um, so Ghani um, has actually been quite a good um, in terms of the way they've approached it. They've done a new upcycle collaboration with Priya Ahualia and this is just a snapshot of one of the images that they've used for their campaign, which is um, basically they've turned their dead stock into new product, which I think is really a, 
applaudable really to be to be honest and I think it's just a new way of looking at fashion so um the rest of us though have a wardrobe full of clothes that we don't know what to do with so my advice would be just take an hour out of your day and have a look at that wardrobe and what have you actually worn in the last two years because 10% of it you're actually wearing and I would say probably the other 80% is just hanging about because it's a sentimental value but the chances of you actually wearing it again are probably very slim so if you took a bit of time out and had a look at it you'd probably find there's quite a few rejects but don't chuck it in the bin don't automatically give it away to Oxfam just have a little look at it because what could we do with those things well you could take the sleeves off your old jumpers and make them into that tank top that I showed you for your wardrobe um, for working from home or you could take your old jeans that have got slashes across the knees and make them into shorts don't immediately think you have to get rid of everything there could be a way of regenerating it or upcycling it for yourself and you don't necessarily need to get a sewing machine out to do it so that was just a few ideas from me. Um, the other thing you could do is if you have a load of rejects and you've got a nice group of friends that are um, of like minded um, and they're part of your tribe, let's say, you could have a swap party and you could take those clothes and you could just swap them for other people's rejects because what's your reject might be somebody else's treasure. So that might be quite a good fun way of um, looking at your wardrobe and getting some new product in there without actually spending any money. And then that's it from me, unless you have any questions. Um, I know I went at high speed, so hopefully um, you have been able to take it all in. But if there's anything you want me to go back over right now, do, um, do take the opportunity to ask me. But on the other hand, big picture ideas, future trends and design intel or a personal wardrobe rehash, um, do feel free to contact me. I've just put my contact details up there um, should you want them. But um, it's been fantastic to have the opportunity to chat to you all. Joe, it's so nice of you to join us. Thank you so much for making the time today. And um, I actually haven't got any questions because I just no. think really comprehensive. Um, and I just think that was really, really interesting. I didn't know a lot of things that you'd put in there actually. Um, so I think it was quite an educational journey as well. So thank you for that. Um, and I should be wearing blue to work <laughs> more often than <laughs> blue. Um, but no, thank you so much. So if no one else has got any questions, um, just to, so you know that I can circulate Joe's details afterwards um, uh, as, as well. Um, so yeah, and then Lisa says, thanks. For, that's very interesting. Can't wait to dress up again. It's been really yeah, inspiring. Yeah, I think it's, I think we're all ready for that opportunity, aren't we, to go to the pub in a ball gown. Um, <laughs> Or, <laughs> or like, dress in some Ugg boots. <laughs> yeah, or a, I mean, I don't think there's anything wrong with going out in a sparkly dress with some Ugg boots, to be honest. I think Chanel really like showed it how, how it could be done. But um, I think we're all a bit fed up with the joggers. And um, I was talking to a friend the other day who said that lots of the high street went really big on those um, on the joggers and they had them all over online and now suddenly it's just fallen through the floor and no one's buying them anymore. You've got all these um, joggers. <laughs> Yeah, so they've got a surplus of joggers and so what can we do with them? But I think, um, you know, it's very easy to to say we're never going to be wearing them again. But who knows? I think, you know, maybe just fold them up and have them in a drawer. You'll have to take them off my cold, dead legs. I like I wear <laughs> nothing else at the minute. Although when you were saying about dressing up, one fun thing, uh, me and a couple of friends went uh, to York, um, like a retail park they have like home bargains and a few other bits and we were all like dressed up not like dressed up for a night out but I was you know I wore like a nice cashmere uh, jumper with a Oxford button down shirt you know and she was yeah. like you really dress dressy to go to home bargains I'm like, I've just I've just not done it for so long and it was that do you know what our sense of occasion is home bargains rather than yes a nice bar and let's just embrace that and, um, yeah, I think so. I think it's making the most of those opportunities. So why not wear a sequin dress with an Ugg boot? I mean, you know, um, but my, my friends were actually laughing at me because the other day I went to meet them for drinks and I managed to find in the back of my wardrobe um, a pair of sequined joggers that I'd forgotten I had. And um, I wore them with, um, you know, with DMs or whatever and, and a big woolly scarf over the top. And they were like, Joe, you even you've managed to make a pair of sweatpants look glamorous. <laughs> and I was like it's any excuse and it just has to be comfortable <laughs> but it's that thing isn't it of feeling confident confident comfortable and um but you know that party element as well it's just trying to find the balance I suppose 
Definitely. Well, thanks really so good. much again. And I've got your contact details, which I can circulate as no well. No problem. Thank you very much, Lee, for inviting right. me. It's lovely to meet you all. And um, thanks for your time today. I hope you had fun listening to me. But um, It was wonderful. Thank you.